Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Transcribed Half Hour with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Oh, pardon me. Huh? You know where I might find Mr. Richard Diamond? You want to hire him? Yes. Well, stop being so bashful, friend. Come in, come in. Thank you. You're Mr. Diamond? Well, any resemblance to the Irish washerwoman is purely intentional. Do you always do your own laundry? Always. Keeps my petty cash from looking too petty. Sit down, Mr. Uh... Baxter. Clay Baxter from Oak Mulgee, Oklahoma. Clay Baxter from Oak Mulgee, Oklahoma. With a man, I guess, to be in his early 50s. Straight up, he crowded six foot three, counting the two inch heels on his handmade boots. Looking at him, I thought of an old Remington print and suddenly felt like singing a chorus of Home on the Range. I'd like you to come to Oak Mulvey with me, Mr. Diamond. Well, why, Mr. Baxter? My brother was killed yesterday. The sheriff and the coroner said it was an accident. I don't believe it. How did you happen to look me up? I raise cattle, Mr. Diamond. I do a great deal of business in Chicago and New York. I wanted a detective with experience, someone with a good reputation. Bless you. I called a friend on Wall Street, and he recommended several men. One of them was you. I checked your background. I'm satisfied. Oh, good. I charge 100 a day in expenses. Chicken feed. I'll pay it, and if you catch the man who done it, I'll give you a $1,000 bonus. Oh, well, no, I, I can't leave right away. It'll take me at least five minutes to get my affairs in order. <laughs> Yeah, I can certainly see you appreciate a buck. <laughs> Mr. Baxter, I appreciate a buck like a Texan appreciates Texas. Texas? Never heard of him. How was your brother supposed to have been killed? Thrown from his horse, skull fracture. And you don't believe it? I do not. Why? Too good a horseman. Well, it could have happened. Well, if it did, he'd have taken the fall right. Might have busted something, but wouldn't have killed him. Anything else? His wife. My brother was a wealthy man, Mr. Diamond. His wife will inherit everything. Ranch, cattle, all worth about eight or ten million. You think she had something to do with his death? You tell me, Mr. Diamond. I called Helen, told her I was off to Oak Mulgee, promised I'd send her a couple of Navajos or whatever they had out there. Then I took Clay Baxter over to my flat and threw a few things into a suitcase. <coughs> Oklahoma's dry. So's Richard Diamond. Might get arrested. Oh, I don't want to leave it here. Wouldn't make any difference if it was empty, would it? No. Got a couple of glasses? A fifth usually adds up to a full evening, but that's only when Clay Baxter isn't around. When he poured one for the road, the water line receded six inches. I had a quick one, and he finished it. <sighs> How'd that soldier? How do you feel? Oh, so lively. Why don't we forget the plane? You just start running for the window and I'll climb on. <laughs> Oak Mulgee, Oklahoma. Population 17,091, according to the last census, and very hot in August. Baxter's station wagon is waiting at the airport, and the driver took us into town where I was introduced to the local law. This here is Sheriff Billings. How are you, Sheriff? Jim, this is Mr. Diamond. He's a private detective from New York. Howdy, Diamond. Howdy. Private detective, huh? Oh, I've been called other things. Still ain't satisfied, huh, Clay? Not yet. And you ain't either, and you know it, Jim. How about it, Sheriff? You think Mr. Baxter's brother was killed deliberately? Coroner says it was an accident. Hit his head on a rock. That ain't what Mr. Diamond asked. Well, Will Baxter was a pretty good rider, but he could have been thrown. Yeah, I don't... All the evidence says he was. Could see plain where his horse bolted. What could have made his horse shy? Snake, maybe. Not that horse, and you know it, Jim. Well, maybe stepped in a chuck hole. He was limping right bad when he got back to the barn. No signs of anyone else near the body? Well, when I got there, some of Will's boys had already ridden out. Who found him? A couple of old miners. Luke and Phineas Merriweather. Well, let's go out to the ranch, Mr. Baxter, and take another look at the spot where your brother died. Will Baxter's ranch is 40 miles from here, Mr. Diamond. Maybe you'd like to go out to my place and freshen up a bit first. <laughs> Oh, 
You go ahead and shave and shower. I'm going to go build me a drink. Hey, this is quite a place, Mr. Baxter. I'm glad you like it. Take a swim in the pool if you'd want, but watch out for the catfish. Catfish? I, I'm a bachelor. Don't use the pool much, and I don't usually have guests. Love catfish for dinner, so I keep them in the pool. I caught a guy once floating bodies in his bathtub. Don't say. Funny, Harvey. I showered and shaved and met Baxter out by the pool where he was feeding his catfish. I watched a pound of liver disappear like lychee nuts in the Tong War. And we all headed back to town where we picked up Sheriff Billings. Forty miles later, we pulled up in front of the late Will Baxter's ranch. A little different architecture, but just as impressive as my client's. Afternoon, Sheriff. Oh, Wilma. Afternoon, Wilma. Wilma, this here is Mr. Richard Diamond. Wilma Baxter, my brother's wife. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Diamond? Private detective. Come up from New York. Oh? Well, why don't we all go in the house? It's too hot out here. Uh, Mr. Diamond wants to go out and look at the spot where Will got himself killed. Certainly. Have one of the boys fix you up with some horses. When you're done, why not stop back for dinner? Mr. Diamond's eating with me, and he's going to be pretty busy for a while. Now, I'll give you a rain check, Mr. Diamond. Oh, thank you. I'd like you to tell me about New York. It's been a long time, and I've almost forgotten what it's like. Let's go, Jim. It's getting late. Bye, Mr. Diamond. Nice meeting you. Goodbye, Mrs. Baxter. Seems all broken up, don't she? Yeah. Where was she when her husband got killed? Perfect alibi. In town all day. A lot of people saw her. Mighty fine-looking woman. Mighty. We all rode down to the stables, and one of the hands saddled up three horses, and we started out across the open desert. For a man who had spent all his life riding around in taxi cabs, the experience was just short of agonizing. Just up ahead, Diamond. Swell. Never rode much, did you? No, I always bounce like this. I like to make my money belt jingle. Uh, well, here it is. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. Oh. Well, here's where they found the body. Now, uh, uh, what did he hit his head on? That rock right there. Mm-hmm. Did you take an impression of the wound to see if it matched? Nope. Well, why not? Never thought about it. Well, that's a pretty good reason. Anyway, let's dig that rock out and take it back with us. I spent the next minutes limping around, looking for something, and came up with nothing except a longing for a hot Epsom salts bath. We dug up the large rock and took it back with us to Wilma Baxter's ranch. Whoa! 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 Hey. Whoa. Oh! Oh! Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy, Frank. This here's Mr. Diamond, Frank. Diamond, this is Frank Kelly, the ranch foreman. Howdy. Detective fella, huh? Miss Baxter told me about you. Said you was doing some investigating. Yes, sir. Scientific investigation. The way the city boys do it. What you going to do with that raw? A hopscotch. Oh, uh, on second thought, I, I think we'll take turns untying the knots in my back. Good warm shower and you'll feel fit as a fiddle. Well, I got a good start. I'm shaped like one. You'll find it a little bit rough out here, Don. Oh, I'll get used to it, Mr. Kelly. I hope you're right. Ain't much like the big city. Oh? Huh? Just what is the big city like, Mr. Kelly? I ain't never been there. Just what I've noticed. Looks like a man can get pretty soft living in the city. Mm, well, I'd like to show you where I was brought up sometime, Mr. Kelly. We never got around to playing cowboy, though. We were too busy kicking each other's teeth out. See you later, Mr. Baxter. So long, sir. I, I don't think Frank likes you, Diamond. Uh, well, what about Will Baxter's horse? I can take a look at him. Right over there in that stall. Really pulled up lame. Oh, good horse. Never figured to shy at anything. Man, look at that. His hip swollen. Yeah, he really twisted something. <laughs> Steady, boy. Steady. Hey, that looks like an infection. Yeah, it's a funny thing. It kind of does. What are you getting at, Mr. Diamond? Oh, I'm not getting into thing, Mr. Baxter. I just said it looked like an infection. Yeah, we better tell Mrs. Baxter or Frank. Have someone take care of it. Tell me, uh, boys. If you jabbed a horse with something, would that make him bolt? Come on, I want to get back to town and talk with the coroner. (laughs) 
And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Now, look here, Jim. Ain't my word good enough? Why, sure it is, Coroner. But Clay hired Mr. Diamond to do some investigating, and he's doing it. Clay, I tell you, your brother died from natural causes. I don't think so. But if you insist, I'll show this detective fella the body. I want the head wound matched with this rock. Okay, but the mortuary ain't gonna like it. They got him already to bury. The coroner led me across the street and into a funeral parlor where I took a look at the late Will Baxter. Six years with the 5th Precinct homicide and a couple of dozen killings should have conditioned me. But like always, the first look shakes something loose in the middle of my stomach and I have to keep swallowing hard. Looks right natural, don't he, Clay? Yeah. They do a good job here. Uh, bully for them. And he hit his head right here. Concussion, plain and simple. No other marks or bruises? Nope. While the coroner rolled the late Will Baxter into one of the back rooms and made a comparison with the head wound and the rock we'd brought in from the ranch, we went out on the front porch for some air. I lit a cigarette and thought about an old case I'd worked on five or six years before. Hey, you got a cigarette? Sure, Doc. Pick a uni, all right? Hmm. Funny thing. Head wound doesn't match the rock. Sure doesn't. Hmm. Wound is too deep. Rock's round and flat. Nothing sticking up to go that deep. Then I want an autopsy. Why? Fracture still killed him? No, I doubt it. When someone plans a murder, they don't count on one blow to do the trick. Bet there's nothing else that could have done it. Well, nothing you can see. I've met someone here in Okmulgee that I'm pretty sure is wanted for another killing very similar to this. Now, Doc, go make that autopsy and fast. You think maybe you found something, Diamond? You, you think Will was killed deliberately? Maybe, but we'll have to wait for the autopsy. In the meantime, I'd like to go out and visit those two old-timers. Luke and Phineas? That's right, Sheriff. Well, it's my dangerous. Come on, I'll take you out. Uh, you better wait here for the report. Mr. Baxter and I will go on out. All right, you can use my horses, so you won't have to go all the way back to the ranch. Horses? Well, the Merriweather is on the other side of town, not oh. about ten miles, no road. Oh, horses, ten miles. I mean, never play kick the can again. Oh, you oh. really don't take the horses, do you, Diamond? Uh, uh, maybe if you could find me a nice long thin one. <laughs> Holy Ike! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Stay. That's one of the Merryweathers. Well, let's get out of here. Come on, horse. Now, come on. I'm yellow, and I admit it. Now, it's, it's okay, Diamond. That's just the boy's way of letting you know not to come any farther, unless they say so. Oh, swell greetings. What happens now? Hey, up there. Luke. Phineas. What you want? It's Clay Baxter. I got a friend here who wants to talk to you. Phineas? Yeah, Luke? Clay Baxter. Got some friend who wants to palaver. I don't feel like palavering. Better shoot him. Giddy up. Just, just take it easy. Take it easy. They always act like this. Henny don't want to palaver. I gotta shoot you if you don't promote. It's important. About my brother. Henny? Yeah, Luke. About his brother, the digging we found the other day. Oh. All right, I guess. Let one of them come up. Baxter? Yeah, Luke. Send your friend on up. And up I went, leaving my better judgment running off across the desert. I climbed a small hill and found myself standing at the entrance of an old mine shaft. Luke and Phineas and Merriweather stood on either side, shotguns ready, pointed right at my chest. Start talking. Well, uh, uh, gentlemen, my, my name is Diamond. Don't pay no import to names. What do you want? Just wanted to ask some questions about the man you found the other day. You a policeman? Well, kind of. Shoot him. Oh, now, 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 wait a minute. I'm not a real policeman. Then what are you? I'm a, I'm a private detective. Luke? Yeah. What's the matter? It's an honest profession. A fellow's got to make a living. You a real live private detective? Well, I'm a private detective. The real live part I'm depending on. Well, my goodness gracious. Come on in and have some vittles. Huh? Why, Mr... Me and Finney read all them stories about you fellas. Uh-huh. We filled up one whole tunnel with old detective magazines. You fellas really are something. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Let's see your badge. Oh. Oh, yeah. 
Sure, sure. There you are. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I'll be dogged. Come on in, friend. Come on in. I'd like to ask you some questions about this here Dick Tracy fella. Well, one minute I'd face two shotguns, and the next I was turned into an honored guest. I had coffee and biscuits with Luke and Phineas and answered enough questions about the private detective business to fill a dime novel of my own. I squeezed in enough questions to find out that the boys hadn't seen or found anything unusual when they discovered Will Baxter's body. Four cups of coffee and a dozen biscuits later, I bid the Merry Weathers a fond farewell and return to Clay Baxter. They loved you? Oh, worshipped me. Hmm. They're starting a Richard Diamond fan club. Well, did you find out anything? No. Uh, well, give me your hand. I'll help you up on your horse. Oh, couldn't I just walk back? Come on, horse. Hold still. Steady, boy. <laughs> Clay Baxter, sitting in his saddle, had leaned down and grabbed my hand to help me up on my horse, and that was when he got it. His horse took out with the wounded man still up and hanging on. I booted my horse in the ribs. Oh! <laughs> I took off after Baxter like citation on a good day. I closed my eyes, prayed a little, and tried to remember every jockey I'd ever seen before. Suddenly, I looked up and spotted Baxter's horse dead ahead, standing still and right in my path. Whoa! Ooh! Well, I guess it's just my time. If I don't die from this bullet I got in me, I'm going to do it from laughing. <laughs> How is he, Doc? Oh, he'll be all right. Bullet went clean through just under the collarbone. Didn't break anything. How do you feel, Mr. Diamond? Uh, crippled. Any idea who shot Clay? No. Clay said he thought it might have been the Merriweather boys. Oh, uh, I, I, no, it couldn't have been. Why not? Well, the Merriweather boys use shotguns, not rifles. What about that autopsy, Doc? Well, come on, what about it? You was right. Will Baxter didn't die from a skull fracture. What was it? You don't know what was used for sure. A long, thin instrument. Whoever did it pulled the lower eyelid down, killed Will Baxter by jabbing something through the eye into his brain. Probably hit him over the head to knock him off the horse and then got down and made sure. And then jabbed his horse in the flank to make him bolt. Nasty way to kill him, man. That's been done before. Not a man's way of killing. Wilma Baxter was in town all day. When Clay comes around, tell him I borrowed his station wagon. Going out to see Wilma? Going out to her ranch. I want to take another look at Will Baxter's lame horse. And Doc, I want to borrow a pair of surgical probes. I climbed into the station wagon. Close to an hour later, I pulled up on the side of the road. The gate to the ranch house was another hundred yards up ahead. So I piled out, climbed the tall white fence, and slipped into the barn. <laughs> Steady, fella. Steady. Steady. The horse's left flank was still swollen, and very close to a serious infection. I ran my hand over the spot. <laughs> Steady, boy. There was something still stuck in the flesh, so I used the surgical probes and prayed the horse wouldn't kick my brain out. Whoa. Whoa. Steady, boy. Steady. There. Sorry, fellow. I didn't know you were a vet, Mr. Diamond. Huh? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Baxter. You know, in this part of the country, you can get shot for horse stealing. Oh, not stealing. Just taking this out of your horse's flank. What is it? That's a piece of a long needle. Might be a hat pen or something. I think you'd better tell me what this is all about. Oh, well, certainly. Your, uh, your husband was murdered. That's impossible. Uh, suit yourself, but he was. Somebody hit him over the head, knocked him from his horse, jabbed this needle into his eye, then jabbed it into the horse's flank so the horse would pull up lame, look like he'd shied. The killer tried to shoot me this evening, but he missed and got Clay Baxter instead. And who do you think did this? I don't know. The method doesn't fit a man. A woman, then? Well, the blow on the back of the head rules out a woman. Too much force. What have you got left? What I started with. A man. And a woman. Very interesting theory. Mm-hmm. You're uh, from New York, aren't you? I've been there. 
I thought so. Your face is familiar. I haven't been in New York in at least ten years, Mr. Diamond. Oh, funny. Well, I've got to go out to the Merriweathers. With those two old miners who found my husband? Mm Mm-hmm. They saw the murderer. What? Yeah, that's why I know how it was done. I was out there earlier, and I've got to go back after a sworn statement. Well, why didn't they speak up before this? Afraid. Said it was none of their business. See you later, Mrs. Baxter. Have another biscuit, Inspector. Uh, uh, no thanks, fellas. Ten's plenty. Uh, so, uh, Will Baxter was murdered, huh? That's right, and Mrs. Baxter thinks you two saw who did the killing. Gonna lay a trap, huh? Yes, Luke, gonna lay a trap. Mm. Now, look, I remembered Mrs. Baxter from someplace the first time I saw her. Then when I found out how the murder was committed, I recalled a case very similar back in New York. Man was hit over the head, pushed down a flight of stairs, and his brain pierced by a hat pin. A man actually did it, but a woman planned it. The man was caught, but uh, the woman disappeared. Why'd they do it? Uh, The victim was insured. They wanted to make it look like an accident. Well, come on, we'd better spread out. We should have company pretty soon. The two old-timers took off their coats and gave me some beat-up pants, which I stuffed with pillows and blankets. In five minutes flat, I had two dummies sitting with me at the little table. You think they'll fall for it? Well, you can't tell, but uh, you two go on outside and wait until somebody comes in. I just want him to try for one of the dummies. Well, what if he tries for you? Killjoy. Luke and Phineas took their place outside the mine, and I smoked a dozen cigarettes, and then I heard someone coming in, moving quietly up the tunnel toward the light. I played it big. Well, that's, uh, that's fine, Phineas, uh, Now, if you'll just sign this statement. I rolled, and the dummy that represented Phineas Merriweather doubled over from the force of the slug. He shot again, and Luke's dummy toppled. I kicked the lamp out before he got around to yours truly. Two down and one to go, Diamond. I'm afraid I got a big surprise for you, friend. I ain't worried. You should be. That wasn't even close. You're a lousy shot. Yeah. You missed earlier this evening and got Clay Baxter instead. I'll make up for it. No, you won't, friend. Drop it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You heard him drop it. Oh, okay, all right. Don't you? Wait a minute. Well, I get the light. Yeah. Well, hey, it's a Kelly fella. Yeah, you're getting way out of line for a ranch foreman, Kelly. <laughs> Give it to him, Mr. Diamond. Who had you kill Will Baxter? You know, Kelly, you said something today about getting soft in the city. Wonder just how soft I've gotten. Maybe you'd like to find out. Turn him loose, boys. Yes, sir. You are now. Go to it, Mr. Diamond. I don't like getting shot at. It makes me real unhappy when anyone runs around killing people. No, uh, oh, go on, stop him, do it. Shut up, Finney, and let him fight. Now, now, Kelly, why'd you kill Will Baxter? Well, my Baxter talked me into it. Promised me a share of the ranch. And for that, you killed a man, huh? It's a big ranch. Oh, get up. Sure hate to see you leave, Mr. Diamond. I hate to go myself, boys. Love them biscuits. Hmm, Maybe we'll get up and see you in New York sometime. Hey, Kelly's coming, too. Hmm? Doesn't like being tied to his horse like that, I guess. Finney. Uh, Yeah, Duke? Fellas coming, too. Hit him with something. (laughs) Sure. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and is written by Blake Edwards with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Featured in tonight's cast were Hal March, Arthur Q. Bryan, Virginia Gregg, Barton Yarborough, Wilms Herbert, and Wally Mayer. 
Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective.